everyone. Welcome to the Dr. Grant Show. My name is Dr. Kirsten Grant, and I have another wonderful, splendiferous, and fantastic guest with me today. His name is Mark Mawinney, and he is the president and leader of naturalborncoaches.com. The reason why I found him to be so entrancing and so tantalizing is because of the fact that there are a lot of people that I talk to that are entrepreneurs, coaches, and they're at different stages of their journey. And one of the things that I really liked about Mark is he talks about starting a successful business on a shoestring budget and learning how to build your online business without fancy funnels. And how this connects to food addiction or food addiction symptoms such as overeating, binge eating, emotional eating is if you are reducing your stress levels because you have a more clearly defined path and mindset to take, then you will experience less stress and in turn, less triggers. So I can only talk about so many things. I'm bringing out the big guns and the gurus. So Mark, Tell us a little bit more about your journey, how you've helped people, and some key things that maybe people need to avoid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so so I, I'm glad that you talk a lot about mindset, um, Kirsten. Even though I don't know much about food addiction where I haven't struggled with that, um, I do think mindset affects pretty much everything in people's lives. So it doesn't matter, business, personal, everything. Mindset's all connected. Um, I've been in the coaching world since 2014. Uh, so my whole thing is helping coaches get more clients without paid ads. So it's all organic. And uh, I have a podcast called Natural Born Coaches, as you mentioned. We're up to, as time of recording, we're almost 700 episodes released. So that's exciting. Um, and yeah, I'm just all about, I don't want to see coaches struggle because there are a lot of people who want to get into this and they their heart's in the right place. They just there's mindset again they have a mindset issue with charging their worth or there's imposter syndrome and a whole bunch of junk going on upstairs that I help them get past with it so that's what I'm all about helping coaches but I love doing shows like this because it touches some different people who may not be coaches and and I agree with you and the reason let me backtrack a little bit what you said is so important because I know on my end, from my personal experience, so many people that they start a business, coaching, consulting, for example, and because of the fact that they're not finding ideal solutions, they experience imposter syndrome. They don't feel that they should charge their worth, and they think there's something wrong with them as the stress level mounts and the bills mm. <laughs> begin to increase. So then there's this Hail Mary moment myself included, I did it myself, um, another mistake on my end, where you design a Facebook ad and then you expect to lay back and watch all, all the money and all the leads. Yeah, <laughs> rolling in. <laughs> Roll, roll in. <laughs> So my goal with um, that leg of what you stated in this part of the conversation is, what are some of the key indicators that you're going in the right direction that you shouldn't give up you just need to tweak it by a degree or two well i always say you have to play a bit of a jedi mind trick on yourself so i don't know if you're a star wars fan i'm a closet geek i like star wars superhero films comic book type things but um, when i say jedi mind trick you, you can pretty much charge whatever you want for example if you're an entrepreneur if you're a coach as long as that person in the mirror believes that it's worth it you know, so I always say the toughest person to convince is the person looking back at you in the mirror. It's not anyone out in the marketplace. If you believe that you're worth it, it's going to shine through. If you're hesitant, if you're not sure of it or whatever, uh, you're talking to potential clients, customers, it's going to come through with what you're talking about. Um, I just actually finished rereading a, a great book and I'll mention it here because I think it can help with this topic. And it's by... Kamal Ravikant, and it's called Love Yourself Like Your Life Depends On It. And when I mentioned about mirror, it reminded me because he has a practice in there that has to do with mirrors. But make, to give it a, this isn't going to do it justice, but it's a short book. But what he is all about is uh, he thinks that a lot of issues come from people not being forgiving of themselves, not loving themselves. So they're more eager to forgive a friend or a stranger than the most important person themselves. 
uh, with it. So he went through a rough patch and basically what he started doing for 30 days is constantly repeating the mantra or the affirmation in his head. I love myself. I love myself. I love myself, which sounds really silly. I'm not a woo woo guy. It sounds corny. Uh, I don't, that's not something I'd normally do, uh, but it's an interesting exercise. I've started doing it. Uh, instead of thinking one of these wasted moment thoughts, you know, we have 60,000 thoughts in the run of a day, vast majority are negative or not worth much. But if you get used to doing that, when you're waiting in line at the supermarket, when you're in the elevator, when you're driving, when you're brushing your teeth or so on, you do feel better. And then that's going to show up with the results that are out there. So I think a lot of people are struggling because they don't even probably realize it, but they, they hate themselves or they're not feeling very good about themselves. And then that shows when they're communicating and interacting with other people. Hmm. Okay. I, I like that approach. That's really interesting. Have you recommended this as well to other people that you've talked to as you work to help them get to their end goals? And, and if so, how did it work out for them? Yeah, I've mentioned it to clients because one, I like it where it's a quick read. If I say to a client, here's a thousand page book, go read it. You know, if it's war and peace or something like that, they're just, they're not going to read it. This one you could probably read in about an hour or so. So everybody has an hour. How much time do people spend scrolling Facebook or Instagram and looking at junk food for their brains every day? So I have had clients of they, I could tell they were skeptical when I first recommended the book to them. Then they get back to me like a week, two weeks later. And oh my God, like I actually feel a lot better, a lot lighter and things are starting to happen for me. So when I first started giving that advice, I was a little bit hesitant because I have, I don't know, I say my street cred is being not woo woo, very meat and potatoes. I'm not really a law of attraction type guy usually, uh, but I do think that there's something to it there. I think if you go around all day looking for problems and saying to yourself, I'm stupid, I'm an idiot, this always happens to me, then naturally that's going to hurt your results. It's going to draw some bad stuff to you. So I have recommended it to people and, and I've yet to hear anyone say, oh, I hated that book, Mark. It was horrible. They all liked it and seems to be working. And I'm not an affiliate for that book or anything. I just like recommending good resources. And I think it ties into the theme of the show. Well, I agree with you. And I didn't take that at all that you were like, you know, <laughs> but I took it as number one. And this is why I do the show is I can only bring my universe into it. But when I bring your universe into it, it what's worked for you and also what you share with other people and it's worked for them as well, that's where we really get into a very fertile, productive, hard-hitting conversation, I feel. And I, I absolutely love it. Yeah, no, that's what it's all about. Um... I like to, anytime I do something like this, or if I have people on my show, at least give some actionable stuff. Cause I find there's a lot of podcasts. So it's a lot of fluff or it's people just talking to hear themselves talk. It's like, here's my life story. This is when I was born. This is what I did in grade one. This is grade four. I'm sure you see that as a host. Sometimes I'll ask someone a question and it's a 20 minute answer. I could go make a sandwich. I can take a shower, take a walk around the block. Uh, that's why I like your show short. It's concise. It's not two hours of rambling. It's just the facts, ma'am. Give them stuff they need. So I thank you for that. I, um, I believe in keeping it short just because scientific studies have shown that, um, unfortunately goldfish have us beat human beings now, thanks to social media and social media has had plenty of pluses and advantages. So I'm not lambasting social media at all, but thanks to social media, now human beings have an average attention span of eight seconds. Goldfish, on the other hand, have an average attention span of 12 seconds. Yeah, and give it a few years, we'll be even lower. There'll be more of a gap, I'm sure, in five years time. So I'm a, I agree with you. I like social media. It's been great for my business. That being said, there is a dark side to it. You can easily fall into a rabbit hole, especially with the way 2020 was and 2021 so far is. It's just... Uh, designed to suck you in and uh, what I do I, I do the I limit my time on social media and usually I'm pretty good sticking to it I pop in I do what I have to do then I get the heck out of there before I could get sucked in to messages or debates or comments or whatever not now, always I easy wanna, I want to ride that train for a sec if you don't mind mm. now this is huge I just read a study I believe it was conducted by Harvard and it talked about for 2020, they're still getting the data tabulated in. 
And I believe it was Harvard, it could be someone else. But the point of the study is, of course, we know this part. Social media consumption increased exponentially in 2020. No surprise there. Yeah. The percentage though, that did surprise me. The percentages have ranged depending upon what part of the hemisphere you're in, the percentages have been as high as 200% wow. increase to as low as 80% increase. Yeah, now, and it was already high before 2020, so. That, that's the widespread, hmm. but here's what I did find reading and deep, deeper into it. It's not what people think. It's usually, um, now yes, there are parts of social media that are just simply entrancing. And like you said, you're going down that proverbial rabbit hole, which keeps you from getting to what it is that you want to do. And I'm gonna tie it into entrepreneurship and coaching and consulting in a minute. But we are by human nature, psychologically speaking, uh, pain avoidant. <laughs> um, this is just natural. What social media does, it's not that social media sucks you in, which is usually the way it's depicted. It's just that when confronted with, okay, I need to figure out as a new coach how to create a post that's going to be attractive enough to get clients or build my views for my website versus, and this is the unknown, it's intimidating, it's scary, versus, ah, I can go on social media right now look at this really cute article. I can chat with my friends. That is some positive reinforcement. I feel like I'm getting something done. It feels good. And naturally, because we're pain avoidant, we pick the social media. Yeah, it, it keeps you from having to put yourself out there and get rejected to hear no. So uh, I have a love-hate relationship with it though. And I've been reading some books in the last year to wean myself away a little bit from social media. I mean, there's a book that's called 24 six. I forget the author's name, but instead of 24 seven, her whole argument is she takes one day a week on a social media fast. So hers, I believe is Friday night to Saturday night. She, her and her family stay off social media, but there's all these books about breaking up with your phone and a perfect example, how dangerous it can be. I always tell this story a few years back I went to cook a pizza in the oven and I set the timer for I forget what it was like 20 minutes or something like that and I said oh well, I'll just go in the living room open up the laptop on the couch and check a few things you know for a minute or two and a couple minutes later I hear the dinging of the oven that the pizza's done and I'm like no way it's only been like four minutes or five minutes. It hasn't been 20 minutes. Well, I went out and sure enough, it had been 20 minutes. <laughs> so uh, I say it's like those, um, you know, those, I shouldn't say crazy people, but there's crazy people say they were abducted by aliens and there's missing time. So one minute they're, you know, fishing on some lake and then eight hours later, they're nude on, by some country store and they don't remember what happened in the last eight hours. It's kind of like missing time. I know it's kind of a silly example, but it, it is like you don't, you get sucked in or if you're driving on the highway, you see that often where you forget the last five miles or 10 miles, you're just on autopilot and just going, yeah. you're like a mindless drone. And I think social media is the same way. So anyone who hasn't seen it, uh, the movie on Netflix, a social dilemma movie is great. It shows how the company suck you in and try to keep your attention. And they're very adept at that. <laughs> <laughs> They're masters. How many times have you heard of people who work for these companies that won't allow their kids to have the devices or they themselves don't, or then they come out to speak against it to, Hey, this isn't what I thought when we were starting it. Or sometimes they admit I was wrong, but this is dangerous. Mm -hmm. And uh, I feel really bad for future generations, how you're going to be able to keep your attention span. When I was a kid, my nose was buried in a book nonstop. I mean, we had video games and stuff. I was, I was a kid in the eighties. So there was Nintendo and stuff. Don't get me wrong, but I read a lot of Hardy Boys and, you know, books like that when I was a youngster, just like loved books. And nowadays with iPads and with everything else, streaming services and stuff, I don't know if I would have that luxury. A book wouldn't seem as appealing to me mm -hmm. now. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's really, you bring up something that's really, and we can have a whole nother conversation on that. Part of it is the, what's something called a micro flicker that's emitted by your tablet and your phone, which I'm sorry to say a book simply cannot beat. Mm. It's not that it's harmful, but to a certain degree, it is hypnotizing to the subconscious mind. And I'm with you. I am a huge avid book reader when as a kid back in the eighties, I had my nose deep 
in a book so much so my mother would beg me sometimes just look mm -hmm. up you yeah. know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> look around <laughs> you know but here's a question for you swinging it back over to your area of expertise for a person that's looking at trying to make a more engaging post organically what is the secret sauce from what you've observed working with people what is the secret sauce to making organic engaging posts mm. that move the needle to growing your business and still making you feel good about it well there's something that i call the mushy middle and i say you want to stay away from the mushy middle and what that is is that's that area where you play it safe so you put out boring bland content that would never offend anyone and then nobody's mad at you so the problem with that is you're not going to get raving fans you're also not going to get the flip side as many detractors but i always say you need that polarity you should be putting stuff out there that's got half the people loving you half the people hating you but at least that they're engaged they're not indifferent i see way too many coaches who think that the answer to social media is okay i'm just going to go and vomit a bunch of motivational quotes every day i'm going to share oprah winfrey quotes tony robbins les brown and these people I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with motivational quotes because i love them and i do occasionally post one on social media but not all the time you know they're like i said vomiting them out 10 or 15 a day every hour and then they're wondering why they don't get business and from those and People can go to Google and they can Google motivational quotes and get 2 trillion results in a fraction of a second. They're not going to hire you just because you're sharing those motivational quotes. So I have something that's called the last 10 test. The last 10 test means you take the social media platform of your choice, the one that you use mostly for your business, look at your last 10 posts on there and see how many of them are things in your own words, your own thoughts, your own beliefs, your own opinions and how many are just shares of other people. So it could be quotes, could be sharing a video Gary Vaynerchuk did or whoever, uh, could be anything like that, Tim Ferriss, whatever. And out of those 10, I always say that at least seven or eight should be your own stuff. It's okay if there's a few that are other people's. Unfortunately, most people, uh, coaches and online entrepreneurs, it's flipped. They have seven, eight or nine or 10 of those 10 are other people's words and not their own. So don't play in the mushy middle. It can be scary because you don't want to get hate. You don't want to be criticized. You got some stranger in Boise, Idaho in his mom's basement throwing, you know, key, keyboard warrior, you know, throwing stuff at you. But that's a much better way to be. So it's a lesson I had to learn. You know, I come from a real estate background. I spent 10 years from my 20s in real estate. And that's a an industry where you want everyone to like you, right? Because you don't want to lose business and all this, but the online space, I think is much different. So I've put a lot of strong opinions out there and I've sometimes put my foot in my mouth. That's natural. That's going to happen, but I would rather do it that way than just play it too safe. And what is your opinion? Because this also leads to some weight gain. I've, I've found when most entrepreneurs, um, when they start their journey, they begin to put on weight because they're spinning their wheels in all different directions, especially with social media. The biggest thing that I've seen lately is, at least in certain circles I travel in, is the infinite debate of how often should you post and do we create a bunch of reels now since reels are the big thing? Do we continue with video? Is there, from your observation, a more productive way to get your message out there and engage in your audience? I don't know if there's one right answer. Some people like writing, they like emails to their lists or they like social media text posts. Other people like pictures, images, some like video. Now, of course, you're hearing the hot things, Clubhouse. I've been invited to Clubhouse. I, I am on there. I'm very hesitant to take on another bright, shiny object. So I had the person invited me say, oh yeah, I'm on there six to eight hours a day. It's great. I'm like, man, I don't wanna be on a social media app for eight hours a day. So we'll see what happens. Uh, for me personally, what, what I recommend doing is choosing three pillars. And what I mean by three pillars are those three things that you're doing, that you enjoy doing, gets you clients, and then you focus on those three things. You don't try to do 185 different ones. So my three pillars are podcasting. That's my show, Natural Born Coaches, but also going out on shows like we're doing right now, going out on your show. So there's podcasting on both sides of the mic. There's Facebook, but for me, especially the Facebook group. So my group, The Coaching Jungle, has about 20,000 members in it now. Very important part of my business. 
And then finally, there's email marketing, but specifically daily emails. So I used to do emails like everyone else. I do oh, one a week, maybe two a week, maybe one every two weeks. And they were boring. They, they were designed not to offend. Uh, back in 2016, I said, you know what? I'm either going to kill off my email or I'm going to mix it up. So I decided to start doing daily emails and take the filter off and just let it fly. And those two things have completely changed the results that I've gotten from email. So knock on wood, I haven't missed a day yet. And it's been almost 1800 days since I made that decision for emails. And I have yet to miss a day. And that's because it works. So for me, it's podcasting, Facebook group, daily emails, but your three pillars could be and probably are a different person. It all depends on what you enjoy doing and what's working for you. I think that's one of the very key important things before we towards three so you can continue the momentum on. Because if you're doing something and you really just despise it and it's not meshing, I feel that's going to come out. You're not yeah. going to give it your very best. <laughs> or you're not going to do it. You know, if I hated writing emails, I wouldn't have done 1800 straight days of it. I'd find excuses to do something else. So you have to enjoy doing it if you're going to want to do it consistently. And I agree with you regarding the newest social media crown jewel, shall we say, that's uh, emerging. <laughs> I'm, I'm interested in it only because of we all know that when a new social media baby is birthed, the organic reach opportunities is incredible. Yeah. before it's monetized. Um, we saw that with YouTube. We saw that with Facebook. We saw that with Instagram. Now Pinterest has gone more uh, monetization since November, um, I'll say, so far as the reach of a post, if you've ever posted anything on Pinterest at all. So Clubhouse seems really interesting, but and I'd like to explore it. But at the same time, as an entrepreneur, we're very limited time, especially during a pandemic. <laughs> I can't comfortably say that I'm racing towards cost right now. <laughs> well, and I, I know, I don't see what the, the, uh, the, uh, all the accolades are for yet or the praise, to be honest. I've spent, as we're recording this, maybe 20 minutes combined on Clubhouse. It was a lot of people sound like they love to hear themselves talk, and I'm sure there's some golden nuggets in there. It wasn't enough to, for me to say, oh, my God, I'm going to keep this open six or eight hours a day to be doing it. So maybe I'm being a little too dismissive, but a few months back, I heard everyone talking about Parler, or to, which is now off the app stores and everything else. Um, I heard people talking about MeWe, which is supposed to be the next Facebook. I don't know what's going on with that now. I like email because I don't see email going anywhere anytime soon. Plus, you also own that email list. Uh, look at what just happened to Trump. He had, what, almost 100 million people on his Twitter bang, gone. Twitter said, okay, we're canceling, uh, suspending the account or dropping it. When you have an email list, you own that list and uh, it's yours. There's less control than with the social media, the tech giants. And that's why I like building an email list. I think it's really important. I think in a perfect world, you should be building other customer lists, physical mailing lists, which I have because I have a print newsletter that I send to subscribers, uh, building phone numbers, building as much as you can that you can control. Mm. And over time, depending upon how much work you put into it, this will also, I strongly believe, bring about the end result of being able to touch people, change people's lives, move the needle, and also for entrepreneurs, increase profits. <laughs> make money. It all comes down to money, which I'm glad you admit that because a lot of entrepreneurs don't. They try to make it sound like they, no, oh no, put your wallet away, nothing for sale. And they make it sound like they don't want any of the green stuff. And we know that's not true. Uh, some of the greediest, uh, sh biggest sharks that I know out there paint themselves like that. They're like Mother Teresa but really they're, they're, they're like Gordon Gecko on the inside, you know, with it. Uh, so uh, I never believe anyone when I hear them say, oh, no, no, it's not about money. It's about building relationships, changing the world. Well, you should be making money while you're doing all that stuff too, or you're not going to be able to stay in business much longer. I, I agree with you. And I'll say this, the niche, whatever niche for anyone that's listening to this, that you're pursuing, you must pursue that niche because it lights you up on the inside and you're hoping to change someone's world. But yep. if you're purely picking that niche, purely for the profit potential, you will burn out quickly because you'll find no joy in it. You can achieve a 
Mercurian amount of success in it, but you're going to eventually drop it because your conscious and your subconscious mind are going to rebel against it because it doesn't truly make you happy. It's what someone else told you is going to make you happy. <laughs> well, now what we're seeing going back to Clubhouse, it's been what the couple weeks that really people been on there. All of a sudden there's Clubhouse experts. I'll help you make seven figures on Clubhouse. I'm like, you're just figuring it out yourself. But that that's a perfect example of what's wrong with the online space, what drives me nuts when you get a lot of fake experts or people just rolling out of bed or people looking to take advantage of others as well. So uh, no, I, um, I, my, rule, my rule of thumb, and I know we're way off tangent from where we started the interview. I uh, The way the online space is, I've been at now about seven years in here. I Unless I know someone and they prove me wrong, I assume that they're full of it. <laughs> <laughs> They're full of shit <laughs> until they prove me otherwise. And and that's served me well so far. Going with your intuition and um, the, the founder of Spanx, she talks about this frequently. Going with your intuition. She has a story and, and this will be my final closing, but she has a story where she was going to patent and trademark Spanx for the first time. She finally got the deal with, I believe it was Nordstrom's, if I'm yeah. not mistaken. And she was speaking with her manufacturer and she was asking him on a call with her lawyer present because they're trademarking and patenting it. Patenting it. Mm -hmm. And she said, well, what, are, what is it made out of? And he said, Lycra. And um, I believe he said, Lycra and Span. He said something else. Lacquer, sorry. It was Lacquer okay. and Spandex. <laughs> mm -hmm. And um, she said, lacquer? Mm. So she got off the phone and she went to bed that night and she couldn't sleep because something sounded off. She said, lacquer? And she <laughs> called him back. And because of his accent and drawl, he was saying lycra. Uh, but not, it, not liquor. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but, but not lacquer. And okay. they fortunately caught it before it went you know, and was submitted to the Patent and Trademark Office. And this is a huge testament to following your intuition. And I had to share that story because it just seemed to be so apropos. But uh, we can talk about things forever because I really, really enjoy talking to you. And I think you've given people some really good nuggets, hopefully uh, between both of us, giving some people some good nuggets to help shape their journey and the next set of steps they need to take in their entrepreneurial journey. Where can people find you if they want to talk to you and have a deeper conversation with you? Sure. So there's naturalborncoaches.com. That's a podcast website. It's got almost 700 episodes on there for coaches. Almost every imaginable topic has been covered. So there's naturalborncoaches.com. Uh, the other place is the Coaching Jungle Facebook group, which I believe you're in. We have about 20,000 people in there, some really cool folks, good conversations. That is at thecoachingjungle.com. All right, everyone, thank you so much for watching The Dr. Grant Show. You can find me on edibleaddiction.com. And this is also where both past and future episodes of The Dr. Grant Show are housed, edibleaddiction.com. Everyone, thank you so much for watching the show. Much love to you. Bye.